some with slides, one with video, uh, some just uh, extemporaneous uh, without slides. Uh, there are 10 speakers and then we'll uh, stop for 10 minutes and then we'll have a panel discussion based on the material that was presented in the first half and uh, there'll be time for one or two questions after each of the guest speakers and then we'll have the panel discussion which is mainly an opportunity for all of you to comment and ask further questions and we'll try to sort of synthesize and put it all together and since Ted will be uh, video recording it all uh, you don't have to take extensive notes uh, it'll all be on film and it'll be on YouTube for all of you to review and memorize uh, forever thereafter so I'm not going to give us a long spiel. Uh, so Victoria Brandon is our first speaker, and I actually have to thank Lana Fish for recommending Victoria. Um, and she's truly accomplished. She's one of the great uh, environmentalists and uh, conservation people of our time who live here. She lives in, I think, is it Lower Lake that you live? Yes. Lower Lake, and she's a great resource. She's, I think, head of the Redwood chapter of the Sierra Club. And she's been active for many years in environment and conservation. And she's going to talk about, I think, wetlands and wildlife? Well, not exactly. OK, well, Victoria will tell us exactly what she's going to talk about. But it'll be interesting, I know. Well, thank you, Steve. And thank you to everyone who's here tonight for your nice warm welcome and all that delicious food. I. I'm going to talk about the environment in Lake County, but that is a mighty broad subject, and I've also been told five minutes. So what I'm going to concentrate on is the, the natural world here in Lake County and how that can be such an economic engine for our whole community. One of the few things that everybody in this diverse county agrees on is that uh, we, this is a wonderful place to live. It's beautiful, it's got clean air, it's healthy, it's got open space, it's just a terrific place to settle down and live your life. But that's not quite everything. The other thing people that's been true about Lake County right from the beginning is that it's a mighty hard place to make a living. And that is true now, it was true in the past, and it's probably gonna to continue to be true because of our uh, remoteness geographically from many markets, from many uh, sources of, uh, of large, large population centers. Uh, so what we've got to do to move forward into the 21st century and build a modern, thriving community here, uh, which uh, is Hidden, Hidden Valley is the second largest urban place in Lake County is very much a part of, uh, is we've got to learn to build on our assets. And we've also got to preserve what we've got while changing and growing in the future. Well, there, we, to, if you look at this, there are three basic supports for economic life here in Lake County. And they're very much interconnected, and they all have to do with the environment, uh, which is wetlands and wildlife, among other things. One is agriculture, uh, one is tourism, our visitor-based economy, and the other source of, of income is retirement. People who come here, they've, uh, had their working lives elsewhere, and they come here and they, they live on their, retire, uh, to be their retired life, and they are great, great support for everything that goes on in this community. And well, let's look at them one at a time. Agriculture is still the largest segment of uh, Lake County. We are still an agricultural community, as it happened last year, was a terrific year for Lake County agriculture. Um, uh, wine grapes are number one, pears are number two still, and pears, we used to be the largest pear growing county in, cal in uh, the country, and that is no longer true. Uh, we've lost a tremendous amount of acreage, but it seems to be stabilizing and prices are increasing. Uh, it's hard for farmers to make a living here because, again, we're so far from their markets, there are extra transportation costs for everything, there are extra labor costs because this is a small place, and to find a way to move forward with this and to preserve uh, the, um, the agricultural, the closeness to uh, our food source, which is so desirable for everybody, uh, they've got to take a couple of steps on this. Uh, one of them 
uh, is to increase the local market. Uh, and by, by doing that, uh, they, they can uh, have really top quality food, and we sell it locally where it's fresh, uh, and this is good for the whole community, and they can get a much better price on that than selling it wholesale off to the larger markets. And so they can continue to, to farm, which is of such value to everybody. The other thing is, we can't, we can't compete on price, so we've got to compete on quality. And we've got to do things to make our people here and elsewhere realize that they, they've got something really good here. You can grow anything here. We think these days about wine grapes and walnuts and pears, but I, one thing that I don't think many people realize is Blue Lake beans, which are the premium type of bean uh, for home gardeners. They're not grown commercially because they're, they're not economic enough, but they're wonderful. They were developed right here in Lake County, and the Blue Lake, that comes from Blue Lakes. On the, on the north uh, western side of Clear Lake. Uh, the same thing, of course, I think most people do know Bartlett Pears. That was Bartlett who lived here. And that, that's where that variety was, was developed. Okay, the other thing, and it's very much connected, is the visitor-based economy. And the reason why it's so connected with uh, agriculture is that uh, agritourism is, go is going to be one of the ways that uh, agriculture could continue to survive here is and the obvious one on that is wineries and wine tasting and the problem there is we've got to get people who uh, and there are countless thousands up and down highway 29 in Napa Valley to come on up over that hill and see what we've got here and we've got great wine but they've got great wine down there we've got gorgeous scenery but it's pretty down there too but what we've got and that nobody else has is that lake Clear Lake, that's the absolute diamond of Lake County. What it actually is, I, got, I saw this from Dr. Harry Lyons from Yuba College. He said uh, that people talk about uh, Lake Tahoe being the sapphire of California. Well, Clear Lake's the emerald. And I think for several reasons that is extremely apt. I wish I thought of that myself. And to build, another way to build tourism is to expand it from just a summertime activity to going to the other seasons. And the way to do that is to diversify into things like hiking, horseback riding, kayaking, and not necessarily right on the lake, so that people can come, they can enjoy the lake, and then stay overnight, eat a good meal, spend some money here, and then go out the next day and go hiking. And I brought a um, big map of the various, proposed various Snow Mountain National Conservation Area, which is one, something I've been working on for years, will be a tremendous asset to the environment and to the community of Lake County, if and when it happens, and it looks like maybe it's gonna happen pretty soon. In any case, I brought the map in case people would like to take a good close look at that, and after the meeting, I'll be certainly ready to discuss that. Uh, and then we get back to retirement, and we get back to what we started. It's a great place to live. That's what's bringing people here. Uh, people, now that they're retiring earlier, while well, they're healthy and they want to have an active lifestyle in a beautiful place, which is safe and clean, and they wanted all sorts of fun things to do. And we can build on that, uh, not only in what we think of as, again, wetlands and wildlife and going out into nature, which is such a tremendous attraction here in Lake County, but also, we've got to cherish our small towns. Small town America is dying, and it's still alive here in Lake County. Um, Middletown has tremendous potential to be a thriving, uh, prosperous, and still charming small place with its own unique characteristics. Uh, Lakeport is still held on to its downtown. It's kind of holding on with its fingernails, but it's still got it, and it can build on that. Uh, Kelseyville, the same way. Upper Lake has uh, completely turned around in the last five, ten years uh, after the Tallman Hotel went in. Uh, and again, is a focus. And that's, this is the sort of thing that makes people want to come here, makes people want to live here. And that we, in, as we go forward and as we grow, as we will, have got to figure out ways to preserve and cherish while we've still got it. And I could go keep on talking, but I'm not going because I'm sure I've run, used up my five minutes. Thank you, Victoria, for that.
inspiring and informative talk. There'll be lots of time during the panel discussion to discuss many of the issues that you've raised. Maybe if we could take one question now from the audience. Got to look at what her. You couldn't hear that. Did you okay. Asked, she said she's asking about the odds of actually cleaning up Clear Lake. Okay. Clear Lake is different. Clear Lake is very, very old, which is really remarkable. It's shallow and it's warm. It's what they call a eutrophic body of water, which means it's full of life. Which, that's why the fishing's so great. That's why there's so many birds. It's also why there's so many water weeds. It's also why we have uh, we have a lot of algae in the lake. The weeds and the algae are a normal part of the lake, but not this kind of terrible algae blooms we've had recently. That's the result of long-term abuses, pollution, uh, things like erosion coming into the lakes, and tremendous plumes of sediment overloading the system. I do think in the it's going to it's taken a long time for it to get that way. It'll take it a long time to get it cleaned up. I think we've got a very good chance of doing it. The number one thing to make that happen is for the Middle Creek Wetland Restoration Project at the north end of the lake to have to become a reality. Forty percent of the sedimentation and um, carrying tremendous loads of phosphorus that's coming in through the north end. If we can get that filtered, we'll taking a fabulous step forward to, to getting everything cleaned up. Thank you for your question. Okay, why don't we move on to the next speaker, who is Gigi Stahl from Lake County. <coughs> Again, I have Lana Fish to thank for being introduced to Gigi at a Commons uh, Committee meeting where Gigi gave a great talk on the Canocte Regional Trails Project. And I believe she's going to show a video now uh, describing that project and a few other things. Video first, then I'll talk later. <laughs> 